Welcome, my name is Jessica, the Ferrari Family Coach, and in this video, I am just giving you an update on our transition to a raw food diet for our dogs and our cats. So it's been a little while, um, more than a month actually, since I've updated you guys on uh, the transition for my dogs and my cats from, um, from their uh, previous diets to a raw food diet, and so, I first want to start with the really good news, which is that my dogs have completely transitioned. They're like amazing rock stars. I can't even begin to tell you um, how my dogs react every single time I give them their raw food for their breakfast and for, and for their dinner. It's like, it's like this is the food they have been waiting for their entire lives. It's absolutely amazing. They love it. They are so much healthier um, because of it. In fact, our Chihuahua Gracie is um, almost 10 years old and she has a lot of stuff going on. We know that she doesn't have much longer to be with us. Um, she, we feel, has um, cancer from uh, a rabies vaccination that she got when she was a puppy and I honestly feel like if we had not been feeding her a homemade diet these past four years and recently switched to this raw diet, um, I don't know if she would even be with us today. So her diet is, I believe, what's keeping her here with us and thriving in the way she is. Even with everything she has going on in her body, um, the, her diet is, is really giving her an amazing life and allowing her to thrive when um, otherwise she would probably just be trying to survive. So that's amazing. Our young dog Kim, she's about three years old. I mean, she's like a rock star <laughs> and I don't even know. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see um, her live her life and how many years we're going to have her because she We've had her for um, a year and a half, and I know she ate kibble before we got her, and, and I'm sure her parents ate kibble, and, and that all matters, um, what her, her parents ate. In fact, I've read, uh, or I've, I've listened to recently, what a mother dog eats is going to affect three generations um, of of dogs and, and the same in humans. What's what's going on with the human body and what we eat and the processed foods that we're eating. So it affects three generations. So I'm sure she's gonna have some effects, but I'm really excited to see how long she lives and how much she thrives in her life because right now she is just on top of the world and she loves her food. She's so incredibly healthy. We're really thrilled with that. Now, um, I wanted to give you an update and uh, primarily because of my cats. So I knew my cats were going to be harder to transition to a raw food diet and I wasn't wrong. <laughs> um, so they really had never, ha still haven't taken to the raw food and I'm okay with that. Um, my goal right now is just to get as much whole raw foods um, as I can in their diet. And um, so I, I slowly started to wean them off of kibble. Um, my goal originally was to completely wean them off of kibble, get them on a completely wet food diet, and then to, st to start adding in raw food uh, with their wet food and, and transition them that way. Um, unfortunately, one of my cats, my oldest cat, Sasha, um, came down with pancreatitis. And um, this is essentially in cats, what's, what's happening is, um, most people probably understand pancreatitis, but what's happening is that your pancreas um, releases digestive enzymes, it, it helps with digestion, it's part of the endocrine system, and um, this is the same for cats and dogs and humans. It's part of the endocrine system. It also releases insulin um, in the body, so, um, it's, it's a very um, tricky organ, especially for uh, humans and animals who have diabetes. But um, her insulin levels were fine, but she did have pancreatitis. She almost completely stopped eating 
because of the pancreatitis and that's actually um, one of the symptoms of pancreatitis because essentially what's happening is that um, the digestive enzymes from the pancreas uh, because the, the pancreas is inflamed, the digestive enzymes start seeping into other organs, um, namely the kidney and the livers, or your kidney and your liver, and um, essentially your body kind of starts to digest itself. It's really gross sounding, um, but that's basically what's happening in pancreatitis, and it's uncomfortable. So um, she, Sasha presented she slowly started eating a little bit less and less and less until she almost wasn't eating at all um which and this happened very rapidly which most cases of pancreatitis do um the the onset is very rapid over like two or three days and um i obviously had been looking for these symptoms because I was in the transition phase. I was trying to wean them off of kibble. Um, I'm looking for this in all of my cats and Sasha presented. So I immediately took her to the vet. We did blood work um, and some of her levels were elevated. So we did an ultrasound and the ultrasound was like, yeah, she definitely has pancreatitis and um, the other thing I was worried about, which I talked about previously and in other videos and in this transition to a raw diet, um, was fatty liver disease. So because she had stopped eating essentially, and she actually, she had slowed her eating, um, over the period of two to three days. And then she had been about 36 hours without eating. And that is all it took for, um, her liver to start um, acting out as well. So the, the uh, doctor was very concerned about fatty liver disease and the ultrasound um, showed that that was starting. Like it hadn't really fully developed yet, which thank goodness, because if once it does, it can be very difficult to stop. But um, so I was charged with bringing Sasha home. I, I had two options. I could put a feeding tube in her um, or I could bring her home and if she didn't eat on her own, I had to, in, in 12 hours, I had to force feed her. Um, my husband and I decided that we were going to try to bring her home and get her to eat on her own and that I would force feed her if I had to. And if that didn't work, then we would, uh, take her to get a feeding tube put in. Fortunately, I brought her home and she just started eating like crazy. Um, I did have to monitor her for about a week, uh, monitor every single uh, ounce of food that she was eating to make sure she was eating enough, and I had her on an ap appetite stimulant to make sure she was eating enough, and now she is back to normal, eating as normal, but um, I've kind of regressed in um, their food because she's, I have to make sure she's eating and she only wants junk food, so um, they're back to normal with their kibble intake. I'm still giving them wet food twice a day to supplement, which is better than the kibble, but um, Sasha primarily is eating wet food, but it's junk food. Um, so that's where I'm at, and um, it it's really easy when things don't go exactly the way you want them to go to give up, and that's why I'm telling you my story and I'm sharing my transition with you because I want you to understand that you don't have to give up. And even though um, I had a setback and, and my cats have had a setback, I'm still responsible for what goes in their body and I'm still responsible for making the choices that are going to benefit them the most. And I had to make that really difficult decision to say, you know what? I'm gonna give you junk food even though I know it's bad for you because I, I, I want you to live. I want you to get through this and so that's what we did. And um, so now I have a new goal and I'm sharing this with you because I want you to know that that's okay. It's okay to have a setback and change your path, change your direction. Just because you have a goal when you start out doesn't mean that's where you're gonna be when you end up. And as long as you are making the choices for your pets to um, make them as healthy as you possibly can, and as long as you're, you're making the right choices for them, as long as 
your heart is in the right place in making them happy and healthy, then any step you can get to p providing a better diet for them is going to be the right thing for you to do. So even though I've had this setback with my cats and, and they're eating junk food because they want her food, so I'm, I'm giving them a little bit so that they don't eat all of her food. And, um, you know, having a multi-cat household just makes things a little bit more difficult. But that's okay. I mean, I chose to have a multi-cat household. They love each other. They play together. They've been together their whole lives. I'm not going to break them up and, and, and separate them just because we had one little setback. But um, I now have a new goal and I want you to know that that's okay if you do too. So now my goal is to continue to make sure that every one of my cats is eating uh, an appropriate amount and um, especially Sasha because I know that she has pancreatitis now and that can flare up at any time. Um, the goal now is to get as much healthy food in them as I possibly can and hopefully I can still get some raw food in them but just because I had a setback and maybe their diet isn't going to be 100% biologically and species appropriate in a raw food diet. I'm going to try uh, my best to get as much whole raw foods in them as I possibly can. So um, right now my goal is to uh, take the raw food and incorporate it in the wet food that they're receiving. Because even if I can get some of it in them, that's gonna benefit them so much. So that right now, that's my goal. And I've tried that. They have, um, they're not real keen on the raw, raw food. So I actually um, followed the directions from Darwin's. And Darwin's is, is the raw food that, in case you missed some of the previous videos, you can go back and check them out. Uh, um, I have been ordering raw food from them. It's pre-made. Um, they have a dog food line and a cat food line, and um, it's absolutely amazing. That's what my dogs are eating. They absolutely love it. And so they didn't love it raw. I followed the directions from Darwin's to cook it. Um, so I did that, and they actually picked at it a little bit, which was doesn't sound like much, but that's a huge victory. Um, and I wanted to share one other food item with you. Um, I just found this one. It's called um, Vital Essentials. And I want you to know, first off, this is not an endorsement for this product because I haven't tried it yet. However, I have looked up a lot of information about this company. I actually ordered some rabbit ears for my dogs from this company as well. Um, so far, I'm on paper, I'm impressed. Um, and the really great thing about this is, uh, I got this for my cats to try. Um, it's not as biologically appropriate because it is freeze dried. However, it's a, it's a um, raw freeze dried. Um, so this is my next step. And the reason that, again, I wanted to provide this update for you and um, share the, the, all of the pitfalls and all of the successes with you is because it's, it's not all gonna be roses. It's not all gonna be easy. And you know what, that's okay. You can overcome and take a different path and still improve your pet's lives. So that's really the point of the video today is to let you know that, hey, you know what? It wasn't perfect. It didn't go exactly as planned. So now I have a new goal and a new path. And my goal ultimately is still to provide as healthy of a diet as I possibly can to my cats but I need to make sure they're eating. Like that is first and foremost, the most important thing is that they are eating and that, that um, they're living <laughs> because if they stop eating, they're gonna stop living and that's not okay. So new goal, <laughs> we're gonna try a few different things to get as much healthy food into them as I possibly can. And um, I will provide an update 
to you guys again uh, with how things are going to be going with my cats and how they take to some healthier foods, whether it's cooked or raw or freeze-dried, um, because the goal is just to get them healthier. So that's my update for you, and I will see you in the next video on our transition to a raw food diet.